It's time for another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life in general here in the Ozarks. Whether you are considering a move to this area or trying to learn more about the place you call home, we've got something special for you. Without further ado, here's our fearless host, Randy Wilbur. Hey folks, and welcome to another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and I'm here today with none other than Keith Kidd. Keith is the sole, is the proprietor for KDK's uh, Chicken and Waffles. Now you've probably seen their, uh, their, their truck. They've been down at Fiesta Square. They're now down over by between Baum and Razor, uh, on Razorback between Baum and the corner of Razorback and MLK. But, uh, these guys know how to make chicken and waffles. Now, here's the deal. I have been hounding Keith to come on the podcast. I wanted to tell his story. And the reason why I wanted to tell his story is just because I loved his chicken and waffles. I love them. They are great. And we met a couple of months ago and, you know, with the pandemic and all this craziness happening, it just took a while for us to finally get together. But he is here today. We are recording this episode live, indirect, right here at the the brand new co-op location here in downtown Fayetteville. I've actually recorded one other episode here. So folks, when you're listening to this, let us know what you think about this particular episode, but without further ado, I want to welcome Keith Kidd to the podcast. Keith, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. God is <laughs> so, good. I, he is all the time. Yes, sir. So, And I'm so glad that we finally got you here on the podcast. I really appreciate you taking time. I would love for you, because uh, the listeners of this podcast are so used to hearing the origin stories of individuals. Sometimes they tell long stories. Sometimes they tell short stories. You have, as we've had a chance to talk a little bit both here and in other locations, you have an extremely, extremely interesting story. So without stealing your thunder... Keith, I would love for you to tell the I Am Northwest Arkansas listeners a little bit about you. I came here in 1980 as a freshman. I got a scholarship from Crossett, Arkansas, to play here for the Arkansas Razorbacks. And uh, I was excited, young, and I've been here for about 40 years now, and I have seen Northwest Arkansas grow. This is a wonderful place to be. Man, so you, and you just kind of threw that out there like it was nothing. So you you came here from Crossett, which is like right on the uh, Louisiana um, Arkansas border, kind of near Bastrop and Monroe, exactly. right? Yeah. Exactly. So just to kind of give people a visual of where that is, uh, what part of the state of Arkansas that is, and it's different down there than it is up here. Like day and night, it's like <laughs> so, day and night. I mean, everything is so much different in Southeast Arkansas, right? Or across to that, but uh, it's. Totally it's, different. it's totally different. Okay, so you came up here. Um, you decided to play football. What position were you? Wide receiver. Okay, you had some good hands, like pretty, Randy Moss. Like I hands. don't know if I had Randy Moss hands, but I had some pretty decent hands. You had some decent hands. Yeah. Okay, cool. So you came here, and and back in back in those days, that's um, that that was at the time when Arkansas, the Razorbacks, were in the um, Southwest. Act, exactly, we uh, in Southwest Athletic Conference. Conference right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. So they had some. That's when they still played Oklahoma. No, we played no. Texas. We played Texas A and M, Baylor. Uh, we played Rice. And it's kind of different back then. It was yeah. different back then, yeah. And then it just crossed over to the SEC, and it's never been this. Oh my God! It's like I mean, you know, back then we would go to a bowl game. And we would play maybe like a Florida team. But now being in the SEC is like going to a bowl game every week because you got Alabama, you got Georgia, you got Florida, you got LSU. Oh, my Man, goodness. It's, I mean, yeah. it's pretty ridiculous. Um, and the thing about it now is we're still at the time of this recording. Um, the season hasn't started. We don't know if we're going to have a season. If we do. Technically, the Arkansas Razorbacks have probably the, the toughest schedule on record. I mean, their schedule is insane. Listen, they got a brutal schedule this year, man. Hey, but here's the thing. Here's the, the, the golden fleece in all this is that if they do get to play and Sam Pittman, the new coach of the Arkansas Razorback football team, gets these guys to come up and coaches them up and they show up in most of these games, they're going to build a level of loyalty. I mean, they already have, I mean, they already have the state. But they're going to build a level of, you know, excitement that it's going to be. I mean, we're, we're just, a, you know, we're a few players away. Like I, everything that I think we've we've missed, we, we haven't had, which is like um, quarterbacks, 
Um, offensive you know, lineman. Offensive lineman. We need an O-line. Um, you know, I saw that movie Greater not too long ago, which was a really – that was – I made my kids watch that, but that movie was really, really good. And, and so I just think that, you know, Arkansas, every year they have historically just been a couple of key positions away. But I think Sam Pittman is going to make a difference, and I do hope that the um, University of Arkansas gives this man a chance to uh, to build a solid team. I so. think Coach Pittman is going to do a great job here, man. He's already – started with some great uh he got some great assistant coaches and that's where it starts at if you can be able to have some assistant coaches go down and recruit for you bringing some phenomenal kids here and i think in two or three years arkansas is going to be a powerhouse yeah yeah well that, that they, they probably could they probably could let's just hope let's just hope from your from your lips to god's ears we'll see what happens so so keith talk about a, now you so you, you got here you played at the university of arkansas it was a different time it was the southwest athletic conference um then then uh you actually made it to the pros i got drafted to the minnesota viking in fact my senior year i missed the last six games of my senior year and still was able to get drafted in the ninth round. Wow. That's how much potential that I had. Wow. And uh, What happened to you? I, well, my, my last six uh, games was I tore my uh, knee. I had just something minor, and it stopped me from playing. But Minnesota still, they was high on me, and so they drafted me in the ninth round. Wow. Okay. And so you went up to the cold of Minnesota because that's a lot different than Arkansas, even though it's just due north of us. So, so you went up there, and, and now you actually, that year, the year that you got up there, Archie Manning was still the quarterback. Archie right? Manning was the third-string quarterback, and he was on his, on his way out, uh, and he ended up retiring that year. But I got a chance to spend a lot of time with Archie, which was really great. Okay. Got a chance to meet his boys. Eli was about Wait, one. I think I know his kids. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Eli and Peyton. Peyton exactly. And he had another son, Cooper, and Cooper, Cooper was right really up. a super athlete. He yeah. ended up hurting his neck, yeah. so he had to quit playing at Ole Miss. But you know, I remember spending some time with Peyton. Man, Archie used to take those boys in the film room and yeah. teach them about football. The rest yeah. is history, man. Listen, I mean, there's something to be said for that, and you know, it's it's almost like you become a student of the game. Exactly. And they, became, they both became students of the game. At an early age. They really did. Yeah, they really did. So that that's really interesting. So you got up to Minnesota. You got a chance to spend time with Archie Manning. Uh, you got to meet his his uh, his offsprings, which eventually became kind of, uh, you know, big names themselves in the NFL, of course. But so what was what was your overall experience like uh, in the show, as they call it? You know what? It was a the thing was my, my my dream was to play in the NFL you know growing up from cross and being from southeast arkansas and then coming up here at the university of arkansas and then to get a chance to just get there i mean it's just like a dream that come true and uh it was quite a bit of an experience for me i really enjoyed it i loved it you know unfortunately i got hurt my second year I tore my hamstring and it cost me my career but you know i got a chance to get there yeah. You know, and that was an amazing just having a chance to just be there and just kind of see what the NFL is all about. It's strictly business. I mean, nothing but business. Right. But I really I enjoy just, you know, getting drafted, being there with Minnesota. Yeah. OK. All right. Well, no, I love that. That I, that is um, I mean, that's just exciting. Just thinking about every time I get around people, I have some friends that, that played in the in the league as they like to call it, and um, very unassuming people, people that you wouldn't think, um, you know, had played in the league, and, and they did. And, you know, of course, typically when you get out of the league, you you, you, you try to bulk down exactly. and, and lose some of that weight and exactly. all that other stuff because you, you're, not, you're not going into battle every day. But um, And it's always – I love seeing those before and after pictures of those old linemen that end up losing all that weight. Exactly, man. You, I mean, you can't believe it. These guys that were me. running at three and a quarter yeah. and now are like 250 and they're just like – cock diesel so it's it's interesting you know what's amazing now is you got college kids are just as big as those nfl guys now man yeah. i mean yeah and you go back oh yeah line linemen back in the day back in your day like in the early oh, 80s yeah. linemen yeah. were like yeah. like 230 and then you take it even farther you got kids coming out of high school yeah. that are like six six 350 pounds man that is phenomenal I mean, something in the water, Keith. Crazy, there's, man. Something, there's something <laughs> in the water. So, 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 so you finished up uh, your career in the NFL, um, and then you decided to. What, what drew you back to Arkansas? Well, you know what, I uh, I came back to Arkansas, and I'd have, I was decided I didn't want to live back in Crossy. Nothing bad about Crossy, but my family. I come from a family that had a janitorial business, 
Okay. So I got into the janitorial business, and I said, you know what, I want to go back to northwest Arkansas. Because I could tell at that time, northwest Arkansas was really growing. And so I decided. That's an understatement, but yeah. Yeah, I, I decided to come back to northwest Arkansas, and I've had my janitorial business for 32 years. Wow. And, man, it's been phenomenal. I mean, the growth and everything with my business. Uh, I worked really hard, and I decided, you know, I want to come back to northwest Arkansas. And I look back now 40 years ago. This place has really, really grown. I mean, it's still growing. Yeah. I mean, it's a place to be. So tell me something about this, because I know, you know, and then you have a unique, you have a unique experience, because I've talked to a lot of people that have kind of educated me about things. Things were a lot different for black athletes coming up here to Northwest Arkansas back in the early 80s, right? Exactly. I mean, I'm pretty sure you were told at the time, and I think this is a good education for people. When you probably got here, you were probably told where you should go, where you shouldn't go. Um, don't be in certain towns after a certain time. I mean, am I correct? Exactly. They, they used to tell us, don't be in Springdale after 8 o'clock. Don't be in Rogers after 8 o'clock. Right, right. I mean, when I got here, we didn't even have black barbers. Yeah, yeah. We didn't have anywhere to go eat. Yeah. I mean, we didn't, have anything to do. we didn't have anything to do here. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I used to have to go to Little Rock to get a haircut. Oh, my God. Now, so, so, so tell me, so juxtapose that with, with, with what you are experiencing here in Northwest Arkansas today. Because it's it almost like to me, when I hear those stories, and I've heard them from other people that even came and played here in the early 90s, they were saying the same thing. They were saying that's what people were telling, that's what coaches were telling them then. But let's juxtapose that with what, you've, what you experience here in Northwest Arkansas today. How much different is it? It's, it's, been very, it's been a lot different now, man, because now, you know, we have places where you can kind of go eat. You know, we have where you can go get your hair cut. Uh, I remember we didn't even have BET. <laughs> I've heard that. You're the second person that said BET. that to me. So, yeah, you know, we have like... BET now, but things have really changed a lot. <laughs> um, and, you know, there are now, they are now beginning to get the black athletes that they kind of need to get here for the, the football because yeah. – it's been, hard to, it's been hard to recruit. Most right. kids don't want to come up here because there's not a lot to do up here. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so, it's, yeah. you know, it's beginning to get better now. Yeah. No, I, th- I, think, I think you're right. I mean, it's, it's, it's so as an African-American, one of the first things that I, I tried to figure out when I got here was where can I go get my hair cut? Where can I go do this? I was thankful to have met some people. And I shout out to my barber, Nick, at Celebrity Haircuts uh, right on uh, North College. But there are actually a lot of really good barbers here. There really uh, are. White and black barbers that know how to cut. Exactly. That really know how to exactly. cut. There's, exactly. there's, there's folks up in Rogers. There's folks up in Springdale, in, uh, in uh, Bentonville. So, you know, you, you know, if you're coming here and uh, you're looking for something special because I don't know well what a lot of people don't realize is like like my barbers is sacrosanct I mean it, it's it goes without you know what I'm saying yeah, exactly, once you find a good exactly. barber you don't you never you don't want to go and, anywhere and it's else. like cheating yeah if you go somewhere <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, what? you don't even want to tell your exactly. barber you're like man you were out of town I had to go get my hair you're like listen I don't know what happened I just I hey listen that's yeah. just how it is so that's 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 funny I, I know there's a there's a show on ABC called blackish and there was a whole storyline about that about you know cheating on your barber exactly and it's a real thing yeah. so yeah. In, in the in the african-american community but but I, I have have white friends that swear by their hair salon stylist. So right. I get it. I mean, it's just it's just preferences, right? People have personal preferences about who touches them, who does what. So, I mean, it, it's important. But, but you're right. To your point, this area has changed quite a bit since the early 80s when you came. Oh, yeah. And you don't recognize it. But I think the thing for you, more than anything else, that you've been able to really um, – capture is you you started a new business would you would you tell us just a little bit about that and how how did that come to be started the chicken and waffle you know like i said i've been here 40 years and then my thing was there was nowhere to eat yeah. you know you go back down in the south and you know we got chicken and we got you know you got everything back back down south and you come up here it's like day and night you're like yeah. man i don't know what i want to eat Right, and right. so what I did was I met and and to qualify that I don't mean to cut you off when you say because there are a lot of really great restaurants but you're you're really talking about more down home soul for soulful cooking exactly right right yes right. and that that's and that's I want to be very clear here because I don't want people listening to this thinking oh there's no good restaurant it is amazing I mean we have James Beard award winners right here right. in Northwest Arkansas Northwest Arkansas is replete 
with great restaurants. What what uh, Keith is talking about is having amazing soul, soul food. food. Exactly. There, there, and there's some. That's why they call it soul food. Exactly. And I had heard about, and you could tell me if I'm wrong. There was a woman that had a truck. Mama here. Dean. Mama Dean's, and Mama the, Dean. I mean her his her her legacy lives on to this day. People talk about her, and I can see like a tear coming out of people's eyes when they talk about her food and how good it was. I'm gonna tell you how good how, how good uh, Mama Dean food was. They had her. On the SEC channel. That's how big her food was. And they was talking about if you go to Northwest Arkansas, go to Mama Dean's. Okay. And that's when I realized, <laughs> hey, this is really, really this real. Is really real. This is yeah. real, man. Yeah. And you know, you would see people just pack it out. I mean, yeah. they loved it. And when she <laughs> went out of business, people were literally crying, like, yeah. man, you know, we want some soul food. Where can right. we get some soul food now? Right. And, you right. know, and uh and I kinda I kinda I ran off that with Mama Dean. I was like, man, I would love to do something like that, you know, uh, have some soul food where you can come because people, they can relate to soul food. Yeah. People love soul yeah. food. Right. And so that's what I want to do with my chicken and waffles. Right. You know, at some point we're talking about doing greens and cornbread in that food okay. truck. Yeah. Okay. So you're really going to mix it up. So let's, let's talk a little bit. How, how did you decide? I mean, because there's a lot of different routes that we can go with soul food. We can go the barbecue route. You went a non-traditional route, right? Because... And we were talking about this earlier, you know, th- this whole idea of like chicken and waffles for a lot of people, you know, I think it, I don't know who technically made it famous, but there was a comp- there is a restaurant out on the West Coast called Roscoe's, hey, Roscoe's chicken, chicken and Waffles. Yes. Now they, they know what they're doing. Roscoe's has been around for a couple of decades now. And I have a lot of friends that when they go to LA, they make it a point to go to Roscoe's. But, but tell me why, why did you, how did you like settle on? chicken and waffles as your go-to foundation for what you were doing i had a i got a barber that i go to uh uh looks unlimited and he told me he said man i told him we was going to do a food truck he said man you ought to come up with a deal with chicken and waffles and i was like he said nobody around here is really doing that right now he said i think you would do really well with that and i met a guy at verizon that could really really cook chicken yeah and so him and i teamed up and got together, and we decided to do chicken and waffle. And unfortunately, things didn't work out, and he left and took his recipe and moved away. And uh, this young lady named Kathy Herman and I, we decided that, uh, wow, how can we keep this going? So we stopped for a solid year and said, hey, let's go back to the drawing board, and let's see if we can kind of get this thing, get it correct, and then start back over. And that's how, we, that's how KDKs came into existence. Wow. Okay. So you, you started... Then you kind of regrouped, and then you came back again. And so now you, you've got the, the chicken and waffles. Uh, you've got your recipe all set up. So, so what are, you know, can you tell us a little bit about your offerings and what you have. We what, have what's on the we menu? Have, we have the, the wings. We have the tender. And the thing about our tenders are we marinate our tenders. We marinate our wings. We got this thing called the loaded waffle fry. And people love our loaded waffle fry. We got homemade mac and cheese, we got ochre, we got fries, and we even got homemade peach cobbler. And uh, it's been really great because people, I mean, they actually love it. And it's been really surprising because when Kathy and I first started, uh, you know, it was slow getting it off the ground. Yeah. And, like, yeah. I mean, really, like, now, I mean, all the college kids, they, they, we got the athletes, the Razorback team, we got the basketball team. They actually love it. Yeah. And it's very yeah. exciting. Yeah. Now, yeah, because I was there one day picking up uh, some food to go, and, and uh, I think it was uh, Daniel Gafford was there. Daniel or? Gafford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was there. He plays and, with the and, Chicago Bulls. Right, right, right. So I, I, I like the way that uh, U- University of Arkansas athletes support each other. So, yeah, so that's something to be said. Now, so what, what are the p- plans for the future for KDK Chicken and Waffles? My goal is I would love to expand a little bit more. We want to kind of grow right here in Fayetteville right now. We, in fact, we got this thing called a barn. What we're going to do is get out of the food truck, and we're going to put like two or three more fries in this barn where we're at right now because what we want to do is we don't want our, our fans and uh, uh, the customer having to wait a long time to get their yeah. food. We want to be able to get it out pretty That's quick. That's a good sign, though. I will say this. The few times that I've been there, first of all, it was super hot. And there was a really long line, but people were waiting. I mean, people were waiting. So clearly, your your fans like your food. 
They love it. And so what we want to do is we want to kind of put it in a barn, which is really unique, mm-hmm. and we want to be able to cook everything out of there. And uh, later on, we love to move to expand to Benville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people are doing that. Uh, my buddy uh, Jordan um, Wright over at Wright's Barbecue just uh, is opening up a, a location up in Bentonville, like in the next few days. So I think it's pretty exciting. I think there's a lot of opportunity up there. You've got the A Street Market, the Momentary. Uh, there's just, I mean, there's just good food all throughout Northwest Arkansas. It, is, it really is. Everywhere really, that you really go, is. there's there's good food. And, and the good thing, not to cut you off, the good thing about Benville is you got Walmart. Yeah, I mean, you got a whole client. Everybody's heard of that little company, Walmart. <laughs> so. Exactly, exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Not to be confused with Amazon, two different companies. But yes, Walmart is here, and Walmart is, you know, the foundation of uh, of this area, whether people like it or not. And that's, you know, I said, I don't know about you. Have you ever had a chance to read Sim Walton's biography? I have. Okay. Phenomenal. Okay. Yeah. Really, Phenomenal, really, man. really interesting stuff. I just had a newfound respect for him when I had a chance to really, really look at it and to see how he, you know, set things up back in the day. And 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 the thing that I really like is that he created an opportunity for so many people to be super successful. Very. Because you just got regular folk that were here yeah. that were part of that original group that you know obviously they did really well financially because of the stock and everything else. And so I think that um, you know he's always created an opportunity or made it an option for even the regular associate to buy stock in, exactly. in Walmart. So exactly. he was a very yeah. humble man. man. Yeah, he was. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So and and I think that uh, you know his kids and his grandkids are, are trying to to put their mark here on uh, on Northwest Arkansas and Arkansas as a whole. I mean the whole state. So you know, so there's a lot going on. So so you want to do this barn? You want to expand a little bit? Maybe a couple more fryers will will allow people to speed through the lines. Um, um, what what else are you hoping to to do in the near future? Is there any chance that you could end up in Bud Walton Arena or anything like that? You know what? That's our goal is to get into the football stadium and then get into the basketball stadium. Another thing, you know, I'd love to do is be able to do the whole state of Arkansas. Just kind of expand to the whole state of Arkansas. I played here for the Razorback. People still remember my name, yep. you know, and if they come out and try a chicken, I think that's going to be a surprise. How, you know, how well the chicken tastes and everything. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Okay. All right. I love that. I love that. So so I want to ask you this because this is something that's since at the time of this recording, we're still dealing with this COVID pandemic. Even you and I are kind of socially distant. We're sitting here in an area where people have masks on. Everybody in the store has a mask on because it's a state requirement right now. How are you dealing with the pandemic as it's affecting your business? It has really been good for my business. I mean, because people can't go and sit down in the restaurant right now and so what people are doing they're going to a lot of these food trucks walking up you know of course they got the masks on and everything but they get their food they go get in the cars and they go back home they can sit down and eat and it has really opened up doors for food trucks now wow wow that's awesome and so um if you expand or when you expand to this kind of this instead of a truck more of a like a barn type um setup is that going to be at that same location it's going to be at the same location okay so that location just so people know it's it's where the old uh D- D- department of motor vehicles exactly. office was exactly. that that office is like there's nothing there there's now nothing it's there. like what are they doing They're for that building some apartment a stories apartments there which is that's going to be, be huge phenomenal man yeah I mean, that's gonna it's gonna be like you're gonna have a built-in customer base right exactly. there so which looking is really nice that. yeah looking that's gonna be to that. that looking forward to that and for when sports come back and you know when baseball i mean because this would have been a great season oh, man, had had you had baseball because you could a lot of people park around that area and then walk down the bomb yeah. stadium to go to a game and baseball has been very successful the last two or three years man oh, and i mean yeah. baseball yeah. has been phenomenal you want to see the fans is there yeah. so you know we didn't get a chance to do anything this year because of the pandemic and everything but you know i think things are going to come back around it may take a little time but it'll come back around hopefully okay okay i love that i love that so um so what are your hours there uh i'm going to make sure i put all the information online so people know how to check out because because they they can order online now or not yet they can order online okay now hours are from 11 to 7 on uh, and now you're closed on Monday, right? Closed on Monday. So it's 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 Tuesday through Sunday. Exactly. Okay, eleven to seven Tuesday through Sunday. Katie K's chicken and waffles. You can come down there and check out Keith and uh, the rest of the gang. And and uh, how soon before you'll have the barn? Hopefully in the next month we'll have it up and running. 
Okay, okay. And what are you going to do with that? Because that's a tight, that's a tight little, uh, little, 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 little thing that you got there now. So, but uh, we're going to keep that food truck. And here's what we're going to do: we'll be able to go from location to location and kind of do things like. Here in Northwest Arkansas, you know, we can go to Benville, we can go to Rogers, we can go to Springdale, we can go to Salon Springs, Mm -hmm. and we even thinking about going to Russellville. Okay. So uh, we we can move around with that with with that food truck with that that food truck. So you'll you'll keep that for for when you need to go mobile. Exactly. Okay. Now that makes sense. That makes sense. So all right. Well, that so then you 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 are even with everything that's going on out there, you you are excited about the future. I'm very excited about this food truck, man. (laughs) You know, it's been a blessing been yeah. good that's awesome that's awesome so what would you say to anybody that was thinking about moving here to northwest arkansas as we stand here in 2020 I, again i know the pandemic is going on but people have to move I, I actually listened uh connected with a guy uh that ended up moving here partially because he listened to this podcast but also because he got hired by one of the big three um tyson jb hunt or walmart, walmart right. either one of those but he got hired by them he started in august i mean he started in 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 may virtually of course so he's not physically going to the office but he'll be here eventually but what would you say to somebody that's thinking about moving here to northwest arkansas what would your advice be to them and and what would you say is is one of the the big pluses to this area what I love about Northwest Arkansas is this place is really, really growing. Yeah. And for Afro-American, there's a lot of opportunities to do some stuff here in Northwest Arkansas. And I tell people, any, 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 I mean, like, there's a lot of people from my hometown has moved to Northwest Arkansas. Mm-hmm. And I asked them, I said, what do you love about it? Said, there's so many opportunities. I mean, there's a lot of things to do. But there's... I mean, you know, we're growing and there's jobs opportunity here. You got Walmart, you got Tyson, you got J.B. Hunt. Yeah. I mean, and you got the Razorback. There's always something to do. You got the basketball team here. You know, if, you, if you're into sports, you know, this is going to be the best place to be. Exactly. exactly. Even though they may not be playing at this very moment, there will be, there will be some sports at some point in time. Exactly. So. Exactly. Yeah. So, no, no, I think that's, that's huge. And you're absolutely right. I, I agree with you. You know, 100 percent that that's that's really what makes this place special. I mean, you've got you've got the 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 business arena up in Bentonville um, and then you've got the university sitting here at Fayetteville and you've got everything in between, which really makes it kind of a special area. Here's another thing I really like about Northwest Arkansas that they're beginning to do. They're beginning to get some RB groups in here. OK, OK. I mean, right. at the amp. Okay. I mean, they're growing the amp. And I, last year, I saw Mary J. Blythe. Yeah. And I saw yes. Janet Jackson. Yeah. yeah you know, you yeah. got Earth, Wind, and Fire. And so, I, did you know that Earth, Wind, and Fire performed at the old Fay- at the Fayetteville Mall when that was a rich? Yes. yes. I, I was that. there. That, that was, you were there. I was there. I remember in 1980 at Bud, I mean, not uh uh, at Barnhill, they had the Commodores. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Brick House. They had Brick House. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. And, you know, and then about three, four years ago, they had the Essence uh, Festival up here. Yeah. And they had uh, Maxwell. And I'm like, Northwest Arkansas has got Maxwell? Yeah. You know, and that's yeah, kind of big yeah. time for Northwest Arkansas. They're doing that kind of stuff for African Americans up here, man. It's growing. Yeah. It really yeah. is growing. Well, I, and I think it's it's growing in general for all um, any minority that's that's coming exactly. here or, or doing anything here. And I just think it's it's a very diverse area. You know, it's probably the most. It is the most diverse part of the state. It of is. Arkansas. It is. And and uh, you know, I think people when they they don't when they haven't heard about it or, or they don't really know, they just know what they've seen on TV. Exactly. You actually have to come here and see it and and come and touch and. Maybe not get too close to anybody because we're still social distancing, but come and see the people of Northwest Arkansas and see what we're all about. Because I think just like you met me, I met you on the track. Exactly. My kids were running on the track. Exactly. I ran into you. Then I ran into you again. I was like, hey, I know this guy. And then one thing led to another. We started talking. I introduced you to some people. You introduced me to some people. I've, I've, I have uh, you know, had chicken and waffles plenty of times there. You fed my kids. I mean, that's just the way that it is. And, and um, I love that. It's a good you know? area. It's a good area. It really it definitely is. is. It definitely it is. So yeah, absolutely. So final thought for you: is there a, is there a quote or some type of encouragement that you have that has always resonated with you that has always stayed with you that you've shared with somebody else? Yes, I like, uh, and I tell people this: Philippians four and thirteen, I can do all things through Jesus Christ which strengthens me. And you and you can do that, man. Whatever you put your mind to do, 
Yeah. You can do that. Yeah, and, absolutely. And that's what I've been doing. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Well, Keith Kidd, I appreciate you, man. I'm, I'm finally glad we got this exactly. this this, uh, this episode done, and, and I got to sit down with you and talk with you. I can't wait to break bread with you at some point in time in the future when we can do that. But uh, I'll be back down to get some some chicken and waffles soon. But but thank you so much for coming on the thank podcast. Thank you for having me, man. I really absolutely, enjoyed it. Absolutely. So KDK's Chicken and Waffles, you can check them out. What's the website address? 989 Razorback Road. That's that's the actual address. And then what's the, is there a website address? For we KDK's? have one, but I'm not really sure. I'll, Don't worry about it. I'll I'll put it on the show notes to make sure everybody appreciate that. Yeah, because I got some people working with me and helping me do some things, but uh, they're working on that. So yes. well, we, we want to see that happen because your 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 chicken and waffles need to go you go far and wide, uh, folks. I. You got to try them out. I've had the wings. I've had the tenders. I've had the waffles. Really, really good food. And for those of you that are just coming here to the University of Arkansas uh, for your first year, you've never been here before, go down and check out Keith and his team uh, there at KDK's Chicken and Waffles. And I think you'll enjoy what they have to offer. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, there you have it, folks. Another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. So excited to have Keith on the show. We really appreciate uh, just being able to interact with people like Keith and so many others that are making Northwest Arkansas a great place to live, right? If I can borrow that phrase. But um, that's all I have for you today. I hope you guys are continuing to stay safe, stay socially distant. Please, 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 whatever you do, make sure you make plans to vote uh, in this voting season. The upcoming election is November 3rd. I don't care how you vote. Just vote. I don't want to hear about I can't get there. I can't get off of work. Uh, make, Make arrangements to do it. You just need to do that. It's just part of our uh, democracy. uh, We can't uh, make it without you being a part of the equation. So that's all I have for you uh, today. I will be in touch really soon. I hope you enjoyed this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. You can find us wherever great podcasts can be found, and you can check us out online at IamNorthwestArkansas.com. I'm Randy Wilburn, and I will see you next week. Peace. hope you enjoyed this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. Check us out each and every week, available anywhere that great podcasts can be found. For show notes or more information on becoming a guest, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We'll see you next week on I Am Northwest Arkansas.